Hello and welcome to Halftime at the Footy. WA's under-18 side has recently returned from the National Carnival in Melbourne where they placed third and four boys were selected in the All-Australian side. A fairly impressive effort on the back of a pretty impressive program. Now today I'm at ECU Joondalup in a biomechanics lab and we're going to take a look at exactly what goes on behind the scenes in WA's most elite junior academy. The program has been churning out quality young footballers for years, and this season's crop is no different. Get up, get up, get up. Captain of the side is 18-year-old Dom Sheed. There's a whistle. An advantage paid to Sheed from outside 50, decides to go on his own all the way. Dominic Sheed, beautiful finish. And they've certainly come to play. Two goals won already, WA. The on-baller led his side from the front, averaging 28 disposals across his four-game carnival, including a 29 possession and four-goal game, which helped WA to a three-point win over Vic Country. This is for the game. Siren to sound, McCarthy He's for his third it. goal. He nails it! Never in doubt! What a finish! It was a performance that helped earn him the prestigious Lark Medal as the carnival's best Division I player. Yeah, he's the best of his class. type, there's no doubt. The best of type, inside, mid. Obviously makes me feel pretty good about myself. Wouldn't have got it without my teammates kicking me the ball. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty big honour. Some big names have won it in the past, so um, hopefully I can go, go on. And I'm certainly not satisfied with what I've done at the moment. Sheed's name goes up beside a host of West Aussies who have won the award and gone on to have successful AFL careers. Players like David Swallow, Harley Bunnell and Stephen Canelio. In fact, in the past seven years, five West Aussies have taken home the individual award. Dominic Sheed, possession number 21, so far ahead of the rest. Certainly wasn't expecting it. I thought my car was a bit up and down, but um, yeah, I wasn't expecting the medal, but it was a pretty big honour to be named the Lark medalist. Around his neck, the medal was joined by a sling. Sheed came off second best in this contest in the dying stages of the game against Vic Country. Yep. McCartan's been very good for Country and he comes out hard of the ball and hits Sheed and gets him down. There was three minutes to go in the game and I just had a collision with, um, with their biggest bloke on the field. So um, he was 100 kilos or something and his head hit my collarbone and broke my collarbone. I think he, he, missed, he missed the next game with uh, concussion as well, so it was a pretty hard hit. Sheed is set to miss the remainder of the season after needing surgery on his collarbone. So today the skipper was watching on as his teammates were put through their paces at ECU's biomechanics lab. So basically we do the agility test which is around poles. We do the 20 metre sprint and we test how high we can jump as well. We test all of our kicking and handballing skills and also the beep test, obviously, which is a big one. So it pretty much tests how fit you are overall and how quick you are, how high you can jump. So yeah, you do them at the start and then you do them at the end and you see how much you've changed and what you need to work on and stuff like that. So And also the AFL clubs get a hold of them as well. Yep, let's go. Carl Woods has been studying sports science for the past seven years and is completing his PhD at Edith Cowan University. He's looking at talent identification and acquisition of skill in junior Australian football players. We'll use this information to, uh, to identify the difference between these guys, the, the state players, and the players non that aren't, weren't selected within the state program. Um, and from there we'll identify where other players that haven't been selected need to improve their skill sets to get to the, the standard that these guys are at. These types of kicking drills have been around for a while. All that side's on your right foot, all that side's on your left foot. A player is normally scored on how many of the targets he can hit, but today Woods is looking at it from a different angle. We need to really identify the ball velocity to look at the kind of uh, speed accuracy trade-off. Do they supplement the accuracy to make it um, a slower kick or do they supplement the, uh, the speed to make it more of an accurate kick? That's what we need to identify. Um, so we want to uh, look at these elite players and it's, it's been known that the more elite players won't need a supplement either of them, either of those variables. They'll both be accurate and fast with their disposal. It's a bit strange at the start. You sort of don't really know what the point of it is, I guess, but um, once you get used to it and you sort of figure out, you know, the all comes in handy when it comes to, you know, the scouts and uh, working on your technique, I guess. So you might have the two guys that score three out of three. One moves it there at 80 kilometres an hour, and one moves it there at 40 kilometres an hour. So from a recruiting point of view, they, they might suggest that the 80 kilometre an hour is more advantageous than the 40 kilometre an hour athlete. Um, so that, that information is, is novel. It's something that um, hasn't been really looked at, ball velocity in the Australian Football League yet. Um, so our guys are, are really doing some forefront um, um, research for us. 
uh, so we can really put this forth to the AFL. The AFL are always looking to, to identify better ways to identify young talent, to get more names on whiteboards, hopefully get more kids from WA, South Australia, Victoria and the other states drafted. Um, so the drive is coming from the recruiters needing more objective data uh, to really push um, the, the purposes of these testing days um, rather than just rely on their subjective assessments of a footy game. Cut through, cut through. So how does WA's testing results stack up against the other states? Well done, 844. We're a lot faster. Um, so in terms of our actual fitness parameters, we tend to be a lot faster in a linear direction. So over 20 metres, our guys are generally pretty quick. Um, sub three seconds over 20 metres is an elite time, and a lot of our guys uh, at an under 18 level and an under 16 level uh, produce pretty, pretty fast times. From a, a physical maturity point of view, uh, the other states, particularly South Australia and, and Victoria, are a lot bigger than us. Uh, they've got a lot, uh, lot more of muscle uh, mass in their lower body. Um, it comes from undertaking weights at a, at a lower age. Um, their development programs are slightly different to ours. Um, so they're a lot more physically mature, so to speak, but we're, our guys tend to be a lot faster in, in one direction. Now this year we've, we've worked heavily on trying to improve their anaerobic threshold, so their ability to run fast, recover, run fast and recover, um, which, we, uh, which we've done fairly well, uh, to really work to our, our favours rather than trying to match them physically, we try to beat them off the ball. When you're ready, let's go. And while it's all very scientific, Woods says he's often asked if there's a side of football that can't be measured. Push, push. The hardest part for us that we're finding is, is decision making. Um, now that's a big area of my, my PhD that we're growing into as well. We want to identify good decision makers um, and train athletes into good decision makers that, that might ne not necessarily be the best decision makers. Now that's quite hard to, to quantify. Um, so we're, we're trying to come up with some clever ways to do that through using video clips, um, developing specific drills to encapsulate decision making options uh, and looking to quantify that and, and look to train that a lot more. Can you give um, us an example of, of such a, an yeah, activity? Yeah, we, we, we've currently got a whole battery of uh, clips that are from a behind the goals perspective, video clips. Now we'll um, isolate specific moments in an AFL game where an athlete will need to make a decision, you know, that be kick it to the player on the left, on the right or long or maintain possession of the ball. We will then pause the clip at that critical moment and then the athletes will have to identify what the correct decision is. Now the correct decision is fed to us by uh, our footy coaches. So they'll say, Michael Pratt for example, might say, well in this particular uh, option the player needed to pass left and if our players don't pass left, we can then identify why perhaps they haven't gone with that direction. We can then look to uh, identify why they've gone that way, find the mechanism for the poor decision, so to speak. And Dominic, you're likened to Simon Black in the night. Well, are you? <laughs> Simon Black? <laughs> yeah, oh no, it's, um, nice. you know, yeah, it's obviously a huge rap to be um, likened to him, but you know, I'm my own player, I try to be my own player, so yeah. And what's your major attribute? Um, oh, Probably my clearance work and my kicking, um, that would probably be my best attribute. So what does Woods make of WA's latest Lark medalist? Dom's an interesting one, he's a very good footy player on the field. Um, he comes out here and tests very well as well. He doesn't um, blow you away as, as such, he's not as fast as a John O'Marsh or he doesn't jump as high as a, uh, as a John O'Marsh but he can perform very well in these skill-based tests. He's a very smooth mover. He's a very good decision maker. Uh, he performs well in decision making drills, um, which is why I think it really drives uh, his, his kind of elite standard out on the footy field. He's one of the best decision makers in our team, which probably stems from a bit of a number of reasons. He was a very good basketballer as a junior age, and we know that good decision makers come from basketball backgrounds. Um, so he, uh, in, in these kinds of fitness drills, so to speak, He's probably middle of the pack, but when you turn, put him into a decision-making environment, he's by far the best on our list. Um, he's a very, very clever footballer. What a class act Dominic Sheed is.